Hi everybody and welcome to my channel. I know how much content there is out there and just how busy everybody is so I really appreciate you coming to spend the time here with me. Um, I just want to have a super casual conversation about some topics uh, within the poker industry. Um, I think we are kind of on the precipice of another boom if it isn't here already. Um, this is fueled by you know COVID-19 creating some of the largest online prize pools in history um, and now that people are starting to travel again um, I'm also seeing huge guarantees being smashed in live poker as well um, there's been a slow funnel of disposable income coming in from emerging markets um, a bunch of US states are becoming um, legalized for online poker again um, and there's also newfound kind of conscientious focus on um, a relatively untapped uh, demographic, which is women. Now, this is um, definitely in part uh, fueled by Maria Konnikova's incredible book, The Biggest Bluff. Um, it made me so nostalgic of my early days in poker and I just couldn't put it down. Um, also, um, the enchanting Alex O'Brien recently wrote an article for the BBC um, about her match with Dan Bilzerian. So a lot of things happening in the mainstream media giving us that boost. And then of course there is the company I am currently an instructor for, a consultant, as well as a member of the advisory board, uh, Poker Power. Before Poker Power, I was definitely on my way out of the industry. Um, I kind of felt like I had accomplished almost all of the things I wanted to in poker um, and I just wasn't fulfilled anymore. What's up, baby? What's up, Dan? Come up here. I'm good. Okay. Oh, oh nice job. Okay. Um, now, a little background about myself. Um, I kind of fell in love with the concept of poker when I was a little girl. I was a huge Chow Yun Fat fan and um, he came out with a series called God of Gamblers and I fell in love with the poker aspect more than the actual gambling part. Now it wasn't until um, the money maker effect occurred um, when an amateur accountant won the WSOP main event on television. That was around the time where I was in university. Um, so I saw it as a perfect opportunity to be resourceful. And um, I immersed myself in all things poker after that and was able to catapult my successes in online sit and goes and cash games um, into selling some action for tournaments and being eventually being able to travel the world um, as a brand ambassador um, and poker player for many years of my life. So as incredible as the entirety of that experience was, um, it was definitely not all glitz and glam. Um, I picked up a lot of bad habits along the way. There was a lot of self-doubt, uh, imposter syndrome. Um, you would often be surrounded by the most intelligent, beautiful, charming people, um, but also people who were the most harmful and manipulative. Um, sometimes those would, that uh, it would intersect. Um, I think it's kind of the nature of the industry to um, attract polarizing figures um, and perpetuate risky behavior. Um, some of my most traumatic experiences also came from my uh, association with the poker world. Um, I mean, having said all this, it's not, it hasn't all been bad. Um, so much of my self-growth, uh, my self-confidence and self-worth have also come hand in hand with um, my time in poker. Being in the industry really can warp how you perceive human behavior and your relationship with money. Um, and you really just don't know what people are capable of until they're desperate. 
I always knew poker for me was more of a stepping stone rather than a means to an end, which was why um, when I achieved a certain level of success, I was like, okay, what now? I never wanted to be the best. Um, I just wanted to use it as a way to have elevated experiences. Initially, it was to travel the world and do cool shit. Getting so far in poker and having that dream career was perfect for my life at that point. Um, but eventually I knew I didn't want to have to go into a casino and grind 12 hours to make a living anymore. Um, I also made some financial mistakes and played with money that hadn't quite hit the bank account yet. Um, I got burned and I didn't like the trajectory I was on. Um, and so I took a close look and decided to step away. Even though in many ways I was at the top of my game, um, my reasons and motivations for playing it had changed. Um, and I often would feel like I wasn't contributing anything meaningful to society or the world. Um, so I was burnt out and quite unhappy. I made many efforts to step away from the industry. Um, initially, it was through real estate, um, first commercial, and then ironically, I realized that I wanted to help people find homes because um, that's kind of what I've been doing for myself my entire life. You know, I don't think it's an uncommon theme that people love to travel because they never feel stability. I was also posturing to break into the esports world. Um, video games have always been a comfort pastime for me since a little girl. Um, and I saw a lot of parallels with that industry and where poker was many years ago. Um, however, serendipitously, I got turned down for a role, but got in touch with um, a contact at Poker Power. Um, and it has certainly reinvigorated my drive and love for the game. I am now reminded pretty much daily of all the things that drew me to poker in the first place. Um, I work with incredible women who are inspiring but also love the game as much as I do, um, if not more at, <laughs> on many levels. There's so many talented and curious women out there who just need a gentle nudge in the right direction. Women play poker for the same reasons that men do. Um, we like outsmarting our opponents, making good decisions, and mastering oneself. I believe vehemently in learning poker to apply um, those principles to how you approach decisions in everyday life. However, I don't think I know a single professional poker player who would recommend going pro to their friends. The reason is people really underestimate how straining the game and the industry is on your mental and emotional well-being. Many players also overestimate their edge and underestimate the variance involved. Now having said that, if poker is just a hobby for you and you're a recreational player, it's not your main source of income, meaning you can go sit down at a table, lose a completely normal distribution of sessions or entries, um, or maybe you're young and you don't have a lot of financial obligations, then it is one of the most beautiful games that can enhance every other aspect of your life. Another super cool thing about poker is that it's relatively democratic. As long as you have your buy-in, you can sit down at the table with players from all different walks of life. You're not playing against the house with no edge. Um, you're playing against real humans with real human weaknesses and strengths. While I've always been staunchly independent, I realized pretty early on that I would never have the connections or studiousness um, or nurtured confidence to succeed in a traditional career trajectory. I see a lot of first and second generation young people of color getting into poker for similar reasons. 
I think it's because growing up, we saw just how hard our parents had to grind um, and perhaps only making it so far in life. And while we are eternally grateful and so appreciative of everything they've done, um, we knew we kind of wanted to pave a different path for ourselves. Um, and we dreamt up, up a different way to have elevated experiences without maybe quenching that inner fire. Speaking of inner flames, I just want to wrap up by pointing out that a large part of what we do at Poker Power is to actually reignite that flame in women. Um, now that fire exists in everybody, but I think sometimes it can be uh, hidden or buried a lot deeper in women. We're creating a space where it's okay for women to explore an often undernourished side of themselves. A place where it's okay to make mistakes, look silly, um, and try again. We're not molding poker professionals, but rather showing women that they can be in all the spaces where men are. All the spaces where decisions are made, where networking happens. We want to show them that there are good role models out there, that there's people who care about seeing them succeed. Um, and we want to eliminate some of the most basic obstacles for them to get started. And hope that they stay long enough to maybe build up the courage to eventually be able to compete in any environment. Um, not just at the poker table, but anywhere else they would want to in any field or any game. So if you know someone in your life who could benefit from our free poker lessons, please don't hesitate to send them over to us at pokerpower.com. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. I know how valuable everybody's attention is these days. So especially if you made it to the end, oh my goodness, my heart is full. Um, please don't hesitate to comment on what I've said so far, how do you feel about getting more women into the game? What do you feel is the state of the industry? Um, and if you'd like to see more content like this, which I hope you do, um, please don't hesitate to give a thumbs up and subscribe. Take care, everybody.